Welcome to worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church in Naperville, Illinois. So glad we can be together for this worship service online. And as we share this worship online, I'd like you to know about some exciting possibilities. Uh, the city of Naperville has made it possible for us to have more outdoor worship services in person at our campuses. And uh, you can go to the website, oursaviors.com, to learn more about that and to sign up and register for those worship experiences. We'll be having those each weekend as long as weather permits. And also while you're at the website, check out the things that are happening as we move into the fall uh, season and the new opportunities for faith formation and missions. Again, check out the details and sign up on the website. We begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with song. welcome you to the children's message. Yeah, you see what I have here? It's a, a bike helmet. It's actually my bike helmet that I wear when I ride bikes. A couple weeks ago, our family was in town and Anna, our four-year-old granddaughter, loves to ride her bike. So we would take our bikes over just a little ways away to a, a parking lot of a school that's near us. We would ride around and around and around and and then we would play follow the leader. Have you ever played follow the leader? And what, whatever the person in the front would do, everybody else would follow. We'd go around the, the circles and, and we'd zig and zag around different things. And we'd all follow the leader. We took turns being the leader. Today, we're hearing about following Jesus. To follow someone means to do what they do. And what is it that Jesus does. We know that Jesus loves us, and because Jesus loves us, we love one another. We know that Jesus forgives us, and so we forgive each other. We know that Jesus cares for everyone, and so we try to care for everyone as well. When we follow Jesus, we do what Jesus does. Maybe this week, that can be something you think about each day. Maybe as you wake up in the morning, think about how today might I follow Jesus, live like Jesus, and then do it. Let's pray. 
Gracious God, we pray that we might follow you, that we might do what you do, that we might love like you love. Teach us, lead us, guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and on the third day raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word. Jesus has just praised and blessed Peter for recognizing him as the Messiah. And then in today's reading, he shows his disciples what being the Messiah means. It means suffering, death, and rising again. Now, for us standing on this side of the resurrection, I don't think we fully understand how offensive those words of Jesus are. I don't think we always understand why Peter, who just moments ago was praised, is now called the Satan, Satan. Now, I know I have said it before, but to me, this is what it would look like. This is what it would mean to be in that disciple space. It's like me looking at a choreographed dance from its blocking chart. It's not easy. For some, it's looking at a football game from its playbook. For others, it's looking at an Afghan from its crocheted instructions. It can be difficult to see the beauty, the movement, the thrill, the warmth from its written or spoken notes. More often, we have to see and experience it for it to become real. That's how I envision this interaction between Jesus and the disciples, where in the first verse today, verse 21, it says, From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Because in this verse, Jesus hands out God's redemption script to the disciples. And the next movement leads to Jerusalem, which the disciples would have expected. But the scenes included trials, the cross, death, and an empty tomb. That's not expected. And they can't quite yet see the dance from its blocking on the page. And thank goodness Peter calls out the director, right? He rebukes Jesus because the choreogra choreography necessary to get to the end is perhaps not the path of messiahship that he had envisioned for his Lord, for the Son of God, the Messiah. But Jesus responds this way. He says in verse 23, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Peter had assumed the role of the adversary, or the Satan. In the Old Testament, the Satan was the one who was tasked to roam the earth and report people and their actions that were adverse to God, and God's loving purpose for the world. And so Jesus is calling out Peter's conflict avoidant behavior. He's calling out Peter's self-interest, his human interest in the story. 
and realigning his friend with God's faithful purpose. Receiving a script at the beginning of a production, a piece of music or choreography at rehearsal can be overwhelming. It's difficult to translate the words and notes into actual movement, especially when it's not the words or the motions that you expect to happen. And so Peter calls it out and Jesus responds, let's understand the fuller purpose of God's love. He says in verse 24, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Now in the Gospel of Matthew, I think it's best to read it always in the lens of the Sermon on the Mount in chapters 5 and 6, where Jesus calls his followers to be salt of the earth and light of the world. Salt and light are both enhancers rather than the focal point. We don't just eat salt from a teaspoon. We don't just look at the sun, but we know salt makes sweet potatoes taste better. Or we know that light allows us to see. So when it says we're called to deny ourselves, I think they're talking about denying our self-interests, looking out for number one for yourself. And the cross will always be a part of our journey. There will always be death and there will always be hurt and harm. But the cross is also that reminder of what God does for us and what we are called to do for our neighbors. So to deny oneself and take up their cross is for the disciples to bear one another's burdens until they see the resurrection of everyone, body, mind, and spirit. A life lived for Jesus means not looking out for our self-interests, but actively living out, enhancing, and caring for the world, for the whole of God's people and creation, so that all shall be well. Following Jesus, though, is not simply about putting yourself last or putting aside what you want to do today. Jesus says in verse 25, For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Following Jesus is not that life is going to be hard and we just need to deal with it, or the notion that we aren't going to be given more than we can bear. Following Jesus is about putting yourself in a position of confronting injustices, not because you're being targeted, but because the family down the street is. Following Jesus is about going to practice every day, even though you know you won't play. It's about showing up because you make the team whole. Following Jesus is about coming to the communion table, partaking in God's gifts for the sake of community, even when you feel unworthy, because it's at the table that you become a part of the communion of saints. Following Jesus is about putting your life at risk so another beloved child of God isn't caught up in the undertow. Like Peter, who was a building block of the kingdom in one moment, we can also be stumbling blocks in the next. We will mess up. We will need and receive forgiveness. We will learn and we will grow. And through it all, we rest in the hope the hope of this passage where in verse 28, it says, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they glimpse the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. Because often, often we lose ourselves in the dance, in the play, in the game, in the music. And the same is true when we follow Jesus. 
When we follow Jesus, we lose ourselves, but we gain ourselves in the community in the body of Christ. And because Jesus has laid out the script, because Jesus has suffered, died, was buried, and rose again, we will too. And we will glimpse the kingdom before we pass. To follow Jesus requires surrendering self-interest and finding our place in God's great story. To follow Christ into not our own self-interests, but into beloved community for the sake of our neighbors, so that all may glimpse the kingdom come. Let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for the cross, for the journey that you have brought us to, that we may be one beloved community in your name. Forgive us when we have put ourselves first. Encourage and support us as we work to become your community, to bring your kingdom here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue in song. No, there's never been anyone like you. Never been anyone like you. You are worthy. You are worthy. No, there's never been anyone like you. Never been anyone like you. You are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, and there's never been anyone like you, never been anyone like you. You are worthy, you are worthy. Oh, and there's never been anyone like you, never been anyone like you. You are worthy, you are worthy. No height, no depth can separate. And then let's see So full of grace and mercy So we sing God is so good God is so good God is so good He's so
God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's pray for our community, for all creation and the world. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us to trust in you, that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us the eyes to see the world as you see it. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our own lives in harmony with all creation. We also ask that you watch over those on the Gulf Coast and all around the world who have recently been affected by storms. God of all nations, you call us to live by your peace with all. Give us ears to hear one another. We not only pray for peace, but to work toward justice and equity for all people. Fill all leaders with your mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are all within their community and in the world. We especially lift up those who have been affected by violence in Racine, Wisconsin, for Jacob Blake, and many others who should be named. And we pray for those who have been called to protect, the police, firefighters, first responders, and military. Guide them to be agents of your peace and love. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer in any way a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany any who are uncertain, and raise the spirits of those who are despairing, and heal the sick, especially those who we name within our hearts now. This week we give you thanks for and uplift teachers, administrators, and all who work within the school system. We pray for students and their families as they begin this school year. We ask that you give them energy and love and safety. 
God of all communities. You call us to rejoice and hope, to be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a place of your love. When we disagree, bring us to reconcile with one another. In the certain hope that nothing can ever separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you, holy God. And all God's people said, Amen. At this time, I want to invite you to share God's peace with someone in your life. Whether you're watching this at home and you have people around you, or you just pick up your phone and you text or email or call someone, share God's peace. Let someone in your life know that they are loved. And at the same time, the peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share God's peace. Love that is kind. Hey church, I want to invite you to save the date for September 26th for our church's first virtual 5K. The Mozambique ministry team wants to invite you to participate in what we are calling Mosey for Mozambique. Mosey meaning you can go any speed you want, whether you walk, run, bike, or just mosey at your jogging pace. And all of this is done in generous love and collections of gifts for our friends in Mozambique. So just if you don't know, Mozambique is located in the southern tip of Africa, and our church has had a mission and a partnership there for almost 10 years now. We're excited to support our friends in the Lutheran Church of Mozambique, the work and advocacy that they do for people with HIV AIDS, how together we feed thousands of people every single year, and how they open up their doors to children as they have a school right there on their church grounds as well. I want to invite you to check out our website, oursaviors.com slash missions slash Mozambique. And there you can read more about the ministry. And at the very bottom, you can click through and register yourself, register your friends and your family, and let's start raising funds for a good cause. And then on September 26th, or any time around then, we want to invite you to participate in your own 5K. Take pictures and send them in to us. And we're really excited to see how our church can come together to support this awesome mission and ministry. At this time, we give thanks to God by sharing the gift of our offerings. Before we share in the gift of communion, I want to invite you to take a moment to go and grab bread and wine, but you can also grab a cracker and grape juice or gluten-free bread as together we share in the gift of communion. We remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat. This is my body. It's given for you. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks to God and gave it for all of them to drink saying, this cup, it's a new covenant in my blood, which means it's the new promise in my love. And it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. Together, let us share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. At this time, I want to invite you and your families to share in the gift of communion, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Dear church, go boldly out into our world to love and serve the Lord. We go out in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, amen. So now let us go out to know Jesus and make Jesus known. Amen. Have a great week, everyone.